Hello and a warm welcome everyone to another video by Digital Bricks, empowering AI education. And this week it's Microsoft Ignite week. One of my favorite weeks in the year. You could basically say that now if you think about every family has their own kind of party festival events that they are following. Super Bowl, Champions League, World Cup, um, maybe religious things like Christmas, Bar Mitzvah, Ramadan, whatever you basically celebrate. But for us in the family, Microsoft Ignite or back then the partner conference has always been a big thing. We are techies and we've been working in the Microsoft ecosystem since a long time. So this week for me is always pretty exciting because the latest and greatest of Microsoft technology is coming out. And I've been watching it yesterday evening in front of my big screen in my living room and putting on some popcorn and watch it like a movie like others will do sporting events. Um, having said that, I think this year is pretty exciting. You guessed it, everything is around AI and Copilot, obviously. Microsoft is pushing hard and um, announcing, I have to say, a lot of impressive features around that area. But before we get started and showing you all of the highlights of Microsoft Ignite, by the way, it was difficult to put up a highlight slide as there is so much stuff coming out. Um, but before we get started with that, I really want to show you something that is quite important and that I always share in my Ignite overviews. By the way, for the people that don't know that as well, I've been doing Microsoft Ignite overviews since 2019, every year one. I used to do that for my old company, HSO. Now I'm doing it for the public. Um, Every year, Microsoft launches the so-called book of news, which you can see in this link. By the way, we're going to drop that hyperlink into the comments of that video. And the book of news has a table of contents that enables you to search in the various business applications that are within your responsibility or that you are interested in, and which releases and notes have been done in that area. Also, you can download all of the visual assets and you can have it in different kind of languages. Visual assets take you to some of the PowerPoints as well as some of the slides and content that has been created. Like for example, silicon updates for Azure infrastructure, out of the box agents, capabilities and specialized roles. So if you wanna grab some slides, that's the way to go. But next to that, the book of news is a good summary of everything that's been announced, as well as if you want to drill down further into a subject, finding the documentations around that. Just an example, Microsoft put everything from a theme perspective this year around agents. So you can find the agents in SharePoint, the self-service agent, and so on and so forth. We're going to get back to that in a bit. But any news you want to look up, you can find in the book of news. So my recommendation, watch this video to get a highlight and afterwards drill down deeper into subjects that you are interested in the book of news. Let's get to the highlights and therefore I prepared a little presentation to take you through that. So the general theme around Microsoft Ignite is obviously AI and co-pilots, but Microsoft also has two sub themes, which they really seem to focus on this year and which shows that Copilot from a kind of preview application starts to mature a little bit more and becomes a real product that can be implemented at scale at Fortune 500 companies, but also at small and medium sized businesses because Microsoft is putting the right frameworks around it. And that brings me to the first highlight which is advanced SharePoint management now included in the Microsoft 365 Copilot license. Why is that important? We actually experienced that some of our customers or some of the customers of our partners implemented Microsoft Copilot and used it for knowledge retrieval, which of course is one of the best use cases and most simplified use cases that you want to achieve and what you want to use AI for. Let's be honest, we all called SharePoint the Bermuda Triangle in the past. You dumped something in there and you were never able to find it back if you didn't have the right SharePoint structure in place. And 
a lot of companies actually not lost knowledge through that. So they wanted to capture that knowledge again, see what they can pull out of it and have a better way of structuring documents. But what happens with those super rock knowledge retrieval scenarios that we've been using with Copilot alongside Microsoft Graph is actually that information has been pulled out that maybe shouldn't have been shared with someone. So the new advanced capabilities put a security layer around that, make it more easy to control Copilot and access to content, prevent oversharing of content, because what actually happened is that people got access to salary lists, which they shouldn't have to go, financial budgets, conversations, stuff like that. Really crazy scenarios. Look that up, by the way, if you want to. Um, it makes it also more easy to manage the content lifecycle as well as the content sprawl. Next to that, every co-pilot in SharePoint got his own agent. And agents are the second biggest theme that Microsoft is running around. So theme number one is security, and theme number two is agents, making it more mature applications for business use. Um, Microsoft announced a couple of pre-built co-pilots for common situations. So what we see is that artificial intelligence is taking on more tasks and becoming a human aspect. Not to replace humans, but to assist humans in simplified activities that are time consuming and annoying. Every SharePoint now has its own agent. So retrieving knowledge out of a SharePoint site and managing it becomes more easy thanks to the agent because he is pulling that information out for you and you just have to interact with a chat perspective. And that is already generally available now. In private preview, there is an employee self-service bot um, that helps people onboard faster into an organization, create engaging learning content and answer commonly asked questions like vacation days, um, general information around the organization. Then you have the facilitator and the interpreter, which are assistants, as the name say, that facilitate either activities, help you organize your day, or interpret certain subjects a little bit better. And they are in public preview. Um, uh, facilitator and project manager there is uh, already now public preview. Interpreter is going to be in public preview in 2025. And project manager is probably the most amazing one. If I think about uh, how I had to register my hours at uh, my old organization. This is going to make life so much more simple. Registering hours through an agent interface that books them for you and registers like time and material spent. Probably one of the most impressive features that's common is Copilot Actions. And Actions help you to automate your everyday task with a simple fill in the blank prompt scenario. So you don't have to code, it's fully no code, and you can set certain activities. It's a bit like Outlook rules, but then for all of the applications and for complete Copilot. So you have a simplified Power Automate that helps you to enable workflows. For example, as you can see in the screenshot over here, summarize my emails related to the employee benefits in the last week and notify me of an email. So you can create a workflow just by text, which makes it so powerful to optimize activities and achieve higher automation levels and productivity within organizations because you don't need someone to create a complicated workflow or code that even for you. Then there's Copilot Pages, uh, which is already generally available now, and there's going to be some enhancements to that in early 2025. Um, Copilot Pages is a canvas that reminds of Microsoft Loop, is actually Microsoft Loop in the background, that is Microsoft's new way of sharing content with each other, working, for example, on blocks of codes, drawings, smaller project activities, or opportunities and sales pipelines, how to target that next pitch, how to prepare for the next conversation with the customer. Pages is your way to collaborate, and Microsoft is adding a lot of enhancements to that. What we also see is that Microsoft actually does a lot with vision and screen recognition. Um, they already announced for laptops Microsoft Recall, 
which basically tracks your activities on a laptop and scans them. Um, that same capability they are now adding into Copilot and Teams. So anything that's going to be shared on the screen or put into the chat, for example, slide decks, um, documents, anything around that can actually be quickly summarized by Copilot itself. While before Copilot was able to only summarize what has been discussed, it can now detect the slides being shared within the screen. So just from a visual recognition, it scans the screen and digests it and is able to summarize it. So also the visual AI aspects are coming more to life. And I see Microsoft playing a big role in that area. Another one that I highly believe in, um, at Digital Bricks, we teach people based on their role, artificial intelligence, because uh, as a marketeer, you want to use AI for different aspects than as you would as a finance accountant. A finance accountant would more retrieve data out of a report, financial report, um, book it for the rise costs departments. While as a marketeer, you want to generate engaging, creative content, very different aspect and use case. And that's why we believe in role specific training and Copilot for Outlook understands that because now you can provide the context of your role are you a sales guy or a human resources internal resource and help you prioritize your inbox as well as reasons as and further guidance on why it did it like this so you can prioritize your mailbox for the contacts that are important to your role meaning a sales guy puts customer meetings first Copilot in Word has some improvements for more the academical part. So the citation capabilities and the sources in drafting are becoming better, which enables you to define already while drafting which sources you want to cite on, making writing your thesis exam even more simple than ever before. Another cool feature is Copilot in PowerPoints. Uh, we are already recording the narrative builder, which is the feature uh, that enables you to yeah, capture your brand theme, uh, your corporate identity into slides better. We are recording this for our Copilot e-learning course. But now you can actually use that also to iterate on that and to translate easily different brand themes from various languages of over 40. Copilot in Excel also has a fundamental change, which makes it finally a bit interesting for me. I've been disappointed with the Copilot in Excel in the beginning, to be honest, but now this might become interesting because with the Copilot in Excel, you needed to have a table first. It means data should already be there. You should have created a table. Of course, you could add data through that, but you didn't have a start from blank capability. And that is what is Microsoft now adding, a so-called getting started experience, as they call it. And Satya Nadella even believes that this is going to be a fundamental change and that Copilot in Excel is going to be the product that makes each and every one of us a data scientist, which is a massive statement. And I'm excited about where this will go. And last but not least, one of our already favorite applications at Digital Bricks is Copilot Lab, and that has been relabeled into the Copilot Prompt Gallery, which is a recommendation from myself to everyone. Go visit that page. Check out the Prompt Gallery because it gives you nice features based on your role and aspect on how you can use Copilot. Gives you already made up prompts and scenarios, as well as day in a life scenarios that you can follow to get some inspiration. So for early adopters of Copilot, check out the Copilot prompt gallery. That being said, if you as an organization are thinking about implementing Copilot, check out www.digitalbricks.ai, our website. We have created a Copilot adoption framework for organizations as well as individuals. For individuals, we have an e-learning course that, by the way, can also be purchased by organizations, but for organizations, we have on-site or remote training programs that span from a small to an extra large accelerator program. A small program is typically around the two and three weeks, includes multiple trainings, 
building of an AI community within Microsoft Viva, adding towards the prompt library and gallery that you've just seen, and a couple of licenses of our e-learning plus additional training days. While an XL on the other side includes 16 training days, role-specific copilot assessments, a technical readiness report, building the AI community, a governance and reporting setup for you as an organization to manage and track the co-pilot process, as well as unlimited access to our video course and education. So if you are currently implementing co-pilot and fail with adopting it, or are aiming to improve your adoption rate, check out our Copilot Adoption Accelerator, which by the way, can be funded by Microsoft as well, alongside a Copilot license sale. So some of the money you can claim back. That being said, we are at the end of this video and I hope you love that Microsoft Ignite overview. Which updates are most exciting for you? Drop us a comment in the comments below.